Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. Mercedes have revealed their latest update on the development of their B-Spec Mercedes W14 model arriving in Imola in the two weeks between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. They said that was the most progress they'd made in pretty much years and George Russell says they've continued that momentum between Saudi Arabia and Australia behind the scenes. They expect when they introduce this new model of the car they will become comfortably the second fastest team and can try and take the fight to Red Bull at some point or another. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Beautiful graphics here, courtesy of F1 Technical from the qualifying session in Australia. But plenty of other pieces of news. Been quite a while since I've discussed the green notebook here from Joe Soward, but some very interesting pieces of information here. So we saw during the weekends, these are just like um, general rumors he's heard around the paddock over the last few days. So Albert Park becoming a night race. That was a discussion that was going on during the weekend. I believe even uh, Stefano Domenicali mentioned the possibility of pushing the race back by a couple of hours to make it more European friendly in part I suppose and making it a night race instead of an afternoon race that's a possibility there's also some discussion around Alpha Tari that um, if someone wants to buy it for a billion dollars they'll do it but otherwise they probably won't they might keep it in Italy they might move parts back to Britain Franz Tost is probably going to retire so a replacement needs to get found there Andretti and Hitech we heard the rumours the other day have temporary facilities to try and launch a bid to be a new team from 2026 and beyond for their respective teams near Silverstone. This other was interesting as well. So you guys might know that Brad Pitt is doing a movie. Well, it's actually the uh, director, I forget what his name is, Joseph Kaczynski is it, of Top Gun doing a film about Formula One with Brad Pitt and Hamilton's going to be involved in some way or another as well. And they're going to have Carlin, so a company that uh, I think they're in Formula 2, Formula 3 and other kind of lower down Formula Motorsport series, make some lookalike cars for that. So that's another thing. There was also um, this discussion that was interesting at the bottom of the article about F1 rumoured to be buying something pretty big, which will increase its value. The speculation is that they're looking to potentially buy circuits, right? Because as it stands, a lot of these circuit owners, as it presently is, have to pay money to Formula One to get them to race there, but they don't really have the money always to expand. So there's an argument to say that for certain tracks, F1 might just straight up buy the rights to that circuit, go there every year, and have the money to develop on top of that and do other things. So yeah, pretty interesting story but those are a number of different potential uh, news items to keep up with over the coming days. Speaking of some of the new teams, Audi, of course, we know they're coming in. They're going to, well, they're with Sauber, so Alfa Romeo are going to go in the near future. They've apparently recruited around 50 tech experts, some of which have been from rivals. So they're taking it seriously. They've uh, scouted, as Aston Martin have over the last few years, some top guys from various other teams. I do wonder if they've taken anyone from Mercedes, just because they have this whole thing, Audi, when they came in, they're like, oh, Mercedes, they're a German team, but really they're based in the UK. So we're going to be the real German team type thing. So if they stole anyone from Mercedes, would be a little bit interesting. But how about Mercedes' intended fight back to the front of the Formula One grid? It's been a tricky few races for them. The best weekend, of course, of their season so far came in Australia. Hamilton getting P2. Okay, Russell failed to finish the Grand Prix, but he would have been P4, P3, probably if uh, the situation didn't transpire as it did with the red flag. And, you know, who knows if potentially if there was no red flag, flag at the start if Hamilton and, and Russell could have held on and held off the sap and basically I don't think there was much chance in that but who knows the red flag near the start kind of ruined what would have been a rather interesting Grand Prix but it did of course get rather hectic towards the end anyway now Giuliano de Kessa was doing the analysis here and they reckon that the Ferrari was actually the second fastest car here yes they scored no points Sites would have been P4 Leclerc unfortunately had an incident at the start and he was off the track and into the gravel Alpine was not far away but I think that was because he was in Sites as DRS the whole time, but Sainz was very impressive on pace, similar to Verstappen when he was charging his way through the field. Yes, as he says here, Verstappen walks so not to attract attention, right? So Verstappen was taking it very easy. But, you know, the perception was that yes, Mercedes was good in qualifying. They managed to switch their tyres on well, but Alonso even himself thought that he probably had two or three tenths extra in the bag. He just didn't have enough delta to actually catch him and pass Hamilton, and Hamilton managed the race very well from his perspective as well. But the discussion was that the Mercedes still on pure race pace might have only been the fourth fastest car. It didn't always seem like that, but um, the Aston and the Ferrari might have been quicker on their day than the Mercedes still. So their fight is not with Red Bull Mercedes, it's with Aston and Ferrari to get back to P2. And then they can take the further steps forward. So as uh, Toto Wolf says, is this where our baseline needs to be? I'm not sure. I think we maximise what we have. I think it was good to see we were racing Ferrari and Aston, and 
and we need to consolidate that as we learn more about the car and bring the upgrade packages we can challenge the leaders more and more often and this is small but he goes on to say the following Red Bull have a straight line speed advantage with DRS which is mind boggling and um, you know which is an interesting terminology right a mind boggling DRS advantage and they do I mean the numbers don't lie right Red Bull with DRS open is monstrous compared to the rest of the grid it seems to be something to do with just how well the aerodynamics at the rear of that car are working when the DRS is open it just seems to stall out the beam wing so well and the diffuser becomes far less effective when the DRS is open like it's that triple DRS effect people have been talking about that other teams need to figure it out because I mean look DRS has been around in this sport for 12 years now since 2011 you'd think the team's had a good idea how to maximize it but Red Bull clearly are doing it far better than anyone else and Toad Wolf admits that right this is a meritocracy this is sport if you have a car that is quick on a straight it is up to us to sort this out and find tools in order to have the same straight line performance but he also says that Australia was somewhat flattering to them I think the style of track was very much an advantage our car lacks a bit of performance at the rear ends this track definitely helped us so that's making us look a bit better than we should be but we know where the weaknesses are and we just need to sort them out because in Bahrain they were the fourth fastest car right and in Saudi Arabia okay slightly different story the track suited them a bit better they were faster than Ferrari but still Alonso was a little bit clearer in the Aston Martin so definitely I think the less rear limited circuits Bahrain is relatively rear limited the last couple of circuits have had more fast flowing high speed corners which are more front limited on the car so when you get to circuits like Austria that's historically a very rear limited track lots of uh, traction zones out of relatively slow speed corners this current Mercedes will be terrible at that circuit but by the time they get there you would imagine at least who really knows it's Formula 1 but um, you know by the time they get there they're probably going to have this entirely new model which they're bringing relatively soon so this is what people are calling the B spec right because they knew going into the season this car wasn't going to cut it and they were already working on an upgrade package that was going to significantly revamp the way the entire car looks the side pod design and what that means for the floor as well going into Imola so that's what they're going to bring Ferrari are bringing more kind of implemental changes I don't think they're going to overhaul their concept this year they were able Mercedes to run their car closer to the ground so they benefited to a certain degree from doing that but uh, Mercedes seemingly got it wrong because they had the ride height of this car relatively high but um you know and they were planning to do that but they're not able to extract the performance they expected to so Toto Wolf is optimistic about the future but the discussion has been that they overshot the target in the ground clearance of the W14 because they expected better performance in the slow corners but um look there's no bouncing there's no bottoming out but they're paying the price for the lack of contact in the fast corners Red Bull has found a way to lower the RB19 especially in a straight line without paying the price and um you know because you're not allowed to wear away the the kind of floor plank of the car more than like a millimeter or something during the course of a Grand Prix weekends and therefore you can't run it flat to the floor but um, Red Bull have somehow found a way to do this I mean look they've just got a great team and they've built a phenomenal car but Mercedes got to figure out quickly how they deal with this because this seemed to be a circuit that favored them but they were still according to Russell seven tenths at least in the race pace of what Red Bull are capable of so Mercedes have a lot to work on they've got to realign the way their entire car is operating and uh, Total Wolf says look we know what we did wrong we know what we've got to do and George Russell says we have made huge gains in the wind tunnel in the last two to three weeks so this to me is kind of the key sentence because we heard from Total Wolf in Saudi Arabia that between Bahrain and Saudi because in Bahrain they realized okay this car isn't going to be it right we've got to make a serious change I think they knew that before but they needed to get the confirmation there and in those two weeks between Bahrain and Saudi they made according to Total Wolf the biggest progress they've made in effectively years he implied like um, in terms of upgrades behind the scenes so the question was had they continued that progress behind the scenes between Saudi Arabia and Australia we hadn't really heard from Toto Wolff we said things were going well but now we get the words from George Russell that in the last two to three weeks pretty much between Saudi and Australia they'd continue to make huge gains so um you know this is pretty optimistic from the Mercedes perspective that in the last month or so they've probably made the most gains in their development that they have in years which obviously shows in the first place that why did they stick with this model over the winter if they'd have you know used their last month as they have now of great development over the winter we could have had a Mercedes that was competitive or up there with the Red Bull but as it stands I don't think they're going to be able to be competitive this season maybe the only chances at the end of the year at a circuit like Brazil again when Mercedes made huge progress and Red Bull have abandoned the RB19 to work on next year's car then we might have an interesting final few races but Red Bull are going to be over the hills and far away by the time it comes to any team competing in my opinion and there's also this part of things I did want to mention here because race fans put together the images 
views of where the driver sits in the cockpit and uh, we can see how far forward the Mercedes is compared to their opposition. The Ferrari is relatively similar but the Mercedes is five centimeters further forward than any other team and the Red Bull, the, the driver is sitting as far back as is pretty much possible. So Red Bull must be onto something here. I don't imagine this is just a coincidence that the fastest car has the driver sitting as far back as possible really. Okay, it doesn't look massive when you look at the lines but um, it's pretty significant how far forward the, the Mercedes driver seems compared to the car. Hamilton was talking about this and saying because I'm so far forward it's difficult to get a feel of what the rear of your car is doing and that sitting further back is preferable. Now this is something that there might be able to be some changes made over the course of the season to the W14 to help this but fundamentally you'd have to introduce an entirely new chassis to change this philosophy and it's probably not something that's going to happen this season. It would have been able to happen probably a few years ago when the teams could spend 500 million dollars but in the bunch of cap era it's just not going to happen right so Hamilton's probably going to have to suffer with that but at least week by week Mercedes are getting more ideas and implications as to what exactly is allowing the Red Bull to be this fast and uh, even Amos go on to say as well that the RB19 leaves the competition perplexed they see what Red Bull is doing but they don't understand how it lowers on the straights the underbody touches the asphalt but how is it possible that the Red Bull does not wear the board more than the authorized amount of millimeters per Grand Prix weekends and that says the FEA just doesn't have to, anything to say about it right because it seems fine but the competition must discover the secrets especially in the fast corners if they hit the asphalt if they hit the track the other competition pays for it with unstable behavior but Red Bull manages to manage both of those very well so there's some secret that Red Bull have discovered here that other teams are trying to find out but it's incredibly impressive what they have accomplished and whether Mercedes new philosophy and design introduced in Imola will allow them to catch up will remain to be seen speaking of Ferrari quickly there are updates coming to Ferrari in the upcoming races Mercedes aren't really going to do anything from now until Imola which I believe is the sixth race of the season so they've got a couple more races of potentially pain to suffer through but Ferrari are going to bring updates pretty much every Grand Prix weekend in small things but um you know is their concept fundamentally flawed and is its ceiling lower than the Red Bulls concept ceiling I would say it probably is but very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time this one here wait here is when lewis won his eighth world champ uh